Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, today I'm going to be talking about Scotchgard, Clydebank Totes, African Waxed Canvas, Sublime Bag Sew Along, the book review will be for Free Spirit Block Party, I'll be demonstrating how to fold fabric on comic book boards and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness, thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, welcome to Social Sunday. So happy that you're here with us tonight and also happy St. Patrick's Day. For some reason I thought St. Patrick's Day was yesterday. Um, it is in fact today. I'm actually 25% Irish. Um, the rest of the mixture is 25% uh, Filipino and my mom was born in Austria so the other 50% is Austrian. Um, <laughs> Danny was uh, sort of mentioning before the show that my forehead looked really oily and I was shooting dagger eyes at him right before the show and he's like, well, no, no, it's okay, you, you know, you don't have to do anything about it if you don't want to. I was just letting you know just so you knew and I was already hooked up to the mic and I was like, oh gosh, I don't have, there's not enough time to wash my face. I don't want to unhook myself from the mic so I grabbed some uh, makeup remover towelettes that I keep by my computer and hopefully looking less shiny. He assured me that um, my forehead is uh, in acceptable shape, shape for the show, so ready to go for that. Um, uh, welcome to Social Sunday. Just, <laughs> just uh, sort of threw me off a little bit talking about the oily forehead. Um, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself, so these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, fabrics, books, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So before we get over to the notion of the week, I decided last minute to show you this artwork that Violet and I were working on yesterday. Violet is 10. A couple weeks ago I saw when I was on Facebook, um, you know, obviously we all see ads when we're on Facebook. Normally the ads are kind of things that I'm semi-interested in, uh, usually sewing or quilting or business related advertisements. Um, I'm not sure if I've ever actually clicked on one before, but this particular ad looks pretty interesting. It was for a company called uh, Let's Make Art. So every month you get um, supplies and projects to make some watercolor artwork projects and I thought when I saw it I was like oh Violet would really like this and it's something we could do together so um, this was the the first project that we worked on they send you postcards with what the artwork uh, should look like and uh, let me just jump over to the side camera I'll show you the projects me and Violet made really quick and then we'll get over to the notion of the week okay so this is what uh, we got in our month's package oh, sorry that's really shiny so you get uh, the watercolor paints needed to make four projects every month. You supply your own brushes and um, uh, we use a little uh, plastic palette for um, not mixing the paint but just pouring the paint out. So these were the six colors that we got. Um, we hardly used any of each one for the first project so we have lots of paints left over for future projects. You get uh, for each of the four projects two pages of watercolor paper and I thought this was super cool. So. You get, um, uh, they call it Let's Make Art Matter, and then a different person is chosen every month. So this month is for Toby. Um, this month our postcard is going to Toby from Iowa who has su recently suffered a brain injury. So they send you a postcard with Toby's address. There's a stamp on there. And on the back of the postcard, it's the watercolor paper. So you just make um, a little bit of artwork for Toby, drop it in the mail. I thought that was really awesome. Um, here is the project that Violet and I worked on. So. Uh, there's four projects. Uh, we started with the easiest one, which was the treetop. So you get the information, um, the, the photograph steps, and there's also free videos on YouTube for each of these projects. So we watched the video as we painted, and it was kind of fun to paint along with the artist. And since it's on YouTube, anyone can watch the video. So this is the rendition that Violet made. Um, you actually make this particular piece by dropping water on uh, the paper after you've drawn the tree branches and then putting the paint on top of the water gives it a really cool um, not smeared effect um, but uh, I really enjoyed doing that and we also use use salt to make um, I think mine is a little bit more apparent since I used a ton of salt but as you can see it makes these really interesting little splotches over here so 
super fun. Um, we're gonna we made plans to to do the next two pieces of artwork this Friday and Saturday. So that's the second one. Here's our paper. This is my favorite from the month. I really liked this particular piece of artwork, and I hope this won't, one won't be too hard. This is for a peacock. So we're trying to finish these up before we get our box next month. I really enjoyed it. Um, I was a little skeptical at first, but it was really super, super fun. So I linked to that in the description. Um, uh, and I'm very excited to talk about Scotchgard today. So I had a lot of requests recently um, to show this product called Scotchgard. I looked on the internet for other similar products because my original plan was to kind of compare and contrast Scotchgard with other brands out there. There really wasn't much in the way of a similar fabric protectant spray. I found one or two others on the internet, but they were really expensive compared to the Scotchgard. So I thought, well, let's, let's just go with the Scotchgard. So my demonstration for the notion of the week this week is for Scotchgard. Uh, I'm gonna jump over to the side camera. I prepared uh, a little sample of a bag that I um, Scotch guarded earlier today. So I'll talk more about this and show you that, that sample over in the side camera. Okay, so again, this is what the Scotch Guard spray looks like. It comes in different sizes. I figured this size, which is 10 ounces, was reasonable for um, the demonstration and the amount of bags that I would expect to Scotch Guard. So earlier today, I Scotch Guarded this uh, project. This is the Day Trip cell phone wallet. So I'm going to show you a little demonstration in regards to how effective the Scotch Guard is in just a second. Um, before I did that, I wanted to read some of the instructions on the back because I thought that it was helpful information and things you might want to know about it. Um, so Scotchgard is a fabric protectant spray. It says, keeps your things looking good longer, won't change the look, feel, or breathability of fabrics when used as directed, gives fabric repellency to help protect against spills, strong protection pushes stains away from fabric fibers, stains release with gentle washing or dry cleaning, um, odorless when dry, and you're supposed to use it for upholstery, throw pillows, table linens, crafts or quilts, fabric purses, which is what we're going for here, clothing, canvas shoes, luggage. Canvas shoes would be great for uh, my Converse. Maybe I should scotch guard my Converse. Backpacks, silk, wool, and linen cotton blends. It specifically says do not use on carpets, leather, finished wood, or plastic. And then one can can cover a sofa or five jackets. So you get the idea of the amount of coverage in one can. And the directions were, and again, I, I applied the Scotch Guard earlier today. Um, Danny actually has asthma, so I won't be spraying this live on camera because we don't want any uh, asthma attacks. But the directions are protect surrounding non-fabric materials from overspray. If overspray occurs, quickly wipe up. Shake can well. Um, always test for color fastness first, especially if you're planning on using it on a particular bag. If you have a little scrap left over, um, test it on that little scrap before you spray it on your finished project. It says spray a hidden area until wet and wipe vigorously with a white absorbent cloth. If color rubs off, do not use. Hold can upright six inches from fabric surface. Overlap spray using a slow sweeping motion. Two light coats are better than one heavy coating. So that's what I did when I sprayed this. Um, I'm just gonna simulate how I sprayed it. So six inches away, I sprayed quickly two coats and uh, well, two overlapping areas and then I followed it up with a second coat. Um, so that's what I did as far as spraying. I did spray it outside. Um, I don't smell an odor in the finished bag, but um, immediately after I sprayed it, I did smell, even though we were outside, I did smell an odor. So. Um, might want to use either a ventilated area or just go outside like I did. And it says allow to dry between coats and then reapply after every cleaning or annually to maintain protection. Durability of protection varies with wear. So um, maybe once every six months to a year, if this is a bag that you use a lot, you can reapply or after you've cleaned it. So if, for instance, if you're putting this in the washer or dryer, you might want to put another coat of, of Scotchgard on when it comes out. So. Um, again, I, I did scotch guard this earlier today. Um, I did a little uh, test uh, this afternoon and um, I thought it was pretty interesting. So I wanted to talk about what exactly I did. So um, I just want to forewarn you, this is not a laminate. So the, the purpose of scotch guard is not to laminate your project and make it water repellent. That's not what it does. It repels liquids and block stains. But for instance, if you're going to dunk this in your bathtub, it, it's going to get wet. So 
I brought a little cup of water here and what I did earlier was I went to the sink and I kind of just flicked some water on it. As you can see the droplets are on the outside for the most part. A little bit of water is going on the inside but um, it kind of I like how it repels it. As you can see it's wet so the water is going in it but I liked um, I didn't test it with dirt because I didn't want to get my, my purse all muddy, um, but I did like what it said on the packaging that, um, what did it say, where did it say about the dirt? Um, strong protection pushes stains away from fabric fibers. Stains release with gentle washing or dry cleaning. So, for instance, if you get dirt on your purse, it's not going to absorb deep into the fibers. We're going to have trouble getting it clean. It'll be on the surface, making the cleaning easier, and again, I did not formally test that with the dirt, but I thought the initial um, results that I got when flicking water on it, um, I thought that was pretty interesting. So that's why I wanted to show on the show. Um, so again, that, this is Scotchgard. Um, I get asked about this a lot, and I think, especially if you're making and selling custom bags, I think this would be an interesting extra to add and something that you could add into the cleaning instructions uh, for the bag. You could let your customer know that, yes, I Scotch guarded it and here's what you'll need to do carrying for your bag down the line and then put your additional instructions. So again, this is Scotchgard. There's a link in the description in case you're interested in uh, checking out the Scotchgard and seeing the other additional sizes that are available. So um, I did not sew any projects this past week that I can show you. I've been working on the second book club free pattern and video. I didn't even cut fabric out because I realize the the fabric I wanted to use that I did not have enough of being just uh, fat quarter pieces so I had to order the fabric online wait for it to come in the mail but I cut out all my interfacing and excited to start on those projects so I, I pulled out my uh, Clyde Bank totes which were the first book club projects just in case you did not see our book club discussion last week um, I know some people just watch the Sunday shows because they have things going on on Tuesday nights um, so I just wanted to show you the Clyde Bank totes and again um, this is a free pattern and video, links in the description. Um, so it's not just available for book club members. Um, if you don't have time to participate in book club, it's free for everyone and the pattern and video will always be available. So you can always find that on my website. So this was the small version of the, the tote. Here is the large version. So you can see uh, the size difference between small and large. And then for the video, I had to sew up a, an additional sample. So this is another small one that I made um, in a succulent fabric with a natural. This is the fawn cork. So um, I really had a lot of fun sewing this project together. I already saw a ton of Clyde Bang totes being posted in the Facebook group. It does have a recessed zipper and then zippered pockets in the lining. So um, a fun bag doesn't require any purse hardware. You probably have all the supplies already in your sewing room. So again, the link is in the description for the Clyde Bang tote. And also if you miss uh, the live show for our first book club discussion. I also linked to that in the description as well. Um, perhaps you got your book late. Um, you can still follow along and participate. The videos will always be available for the book club discussions, so you can always find those on YouTube. And it was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to reviewing uh, the second book next month. And like I said, working on the second book club project um, as we speak. So uh, Danny's favorite part of the Sunday show, go ahead and let us know either on Facebook or YouTube. Type in the comments right now, either Bag Lady or Bag Dude. Uh, we sure do love seeing the Bag Lady and Bag Dude com comments come through. Um, Danny is reading the comments uh, in real time on Facebook and YouTube. And we appreciate the bag making community. Uh, we have a lot of fun events planned uh, later this year and even going on right now for everyone to participate in and um, we're so glad you're here so thanks so much for watching all right so i had some uh, new fabrics that i added to my stash these are actually african waxed prints i purchased these from crimson tate online but you can find them in other quilt shops as well and violet helped me um, when they came in the mail, they came in these cute little bundles. I, I actually purchased uh, Fat Eighth bundles just because I had a particular book club project in mind um, involving a little bit of patchwork. So this will be a project for the month uh, three book. Um, anyway, I'd like to show you some of the prints. I, Violet helped me unfold the rest of them <laughs> earlier this evening. So I'm going to jump over to the side camera and show you these African waxed prints. Okay, so as we were going through these fabrics, uh, depending on the print, they have different amounts of wax. So for instance, there was a print that had, this one has a ton of wax. As you can see, it's shiny. Most of the other prints have very little wax, which um, I guess they're 
very similar to quilting cotton in thickness. Um, let me show you. I'm going to flip through. There's so many gorgeous colors. So I'm just going to flip through these. And like I said, I just bought Fat Eighth bundles just so I could use them for my, my book club project. Um, but I really love the, the bright colors. Um, there were yardage as well as bundles available from Crimson Tate. And this is really different than prints that I've purchased before, but I really like that. I like, I like that they're different and I like the really bright colors. I think I would say most of the quilting cottons that I have are not as bright as these prints are. So something new to try out. And I'm really looking forward to cutting these up. Some of them are very similar on the right and the wrong side of the fabric, which I guess gives you a few extra options there. My favorite prints out of all of these, I would have to say perhaps this one right here. I really liked this one a lot. But it's hard to choose a favorite. They're all, this one, this one was my other favorite right here with the blue and orange. I thought that was really brilliant. Okay, so I have a few more to flip through and then I'm gonna break this little bundle open. I actually saved that one just so you could see how cute that little bundle looked. Okay. I actually saw these on Instagram from Crimson Tate and that was what made me I've seen African wax prints before, but after I saw that Instagram post, I was like, oh, I have to have some of these. So here's some of the remaining prints that I got in my last little bundle. I, I bought four different bundles just because I wanted a, a bigger variety of prints to choose from. And this one's got a bit more wax in it, as you can see, probably um, the shininess. Okay. Oh, here's another. This is similar to that green print that I showed you already. I think I had one of these in the bundle as well. And let me just open up one or two more. Okay, so again, these are African wax prints. Most of the prints were not super waxy, which is good. Um, and again, I purchased these from Crimson Tate. Okay, so I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. Do you normally like using brightly colored fabrics in your projects? Uh, let me know in the comments below, or perhaps you prefer neutrals um, like black, uh, white, uh, gray. Um, I know those types of neutral colors are really great for a bag because you can wear it with any outfit, but let me know in the comments if you normally like using bright colored fabrics in your projects. So um, I wanted to announce or let you know if you hadn't already heard about it, uh, the Sublime Bag Sew Along is starting this week in the Facebook group. So this is the Sublime Bag. Michelle Graham and Bronwyn are hosting a Sew Along in the Facebook group. And week one is this week, which is the, the pre-sew. So that's basically uh, fabric choices, choosing your fabric, getting your interfacing and supplies ready. Um, I've linked to the week one album in the Facebook group. So if you're interested in participating, you can go ahead and post your photo in that album right now. And I've also linked to the Sublime Bag Pinterest board in case you'd like to follow that for some inspiration. Stacy says, hi Sarah, with the upcoming Sublime Sew Along, is there instructions to make the handles with the rectang uh, rectangle rings instead of straps uh, direct to the bag? I've noticed many sewists have posted photos of theirs on Instagram. So off the top of my head, I'm not sure. Um, although I do know Michelle and Bronwyn are always uh, providing at least a few modifications for the sew alongs, which they've done in the past for the dot dot dash bag and the Tudor bag. Um, and they're uh, basically your guides for putting this bag together, uh, whether you have the video or not. So um, go ahead and check the Facebook group for that. I'm sure Michelle uh, or Bronwyn will be posting in the comments. Danny will check for that if they do and we'll put that on the screen. Um, so uh, we hope to have you uh, working along with the group for the Sublime bag. Um, each week a different album will, will be posted in the Facebook group so you can uh, photograph your progress and we'll also have prizes along the way which is pretty exciting. So uh, we'll post updates on the live shows. I think in the past we've done that on the Tuesday shows. Um, so excited to see uh, photos and updates as everyone works along on their progress on the bag. All right, so the book review for this week is uh, a book called Free Spirit Block Party. It's um, a quilt block book with some sampler patterns. So I'm gonna step over to the side camera and show you that book. Okay, so this, this is the book. It's called Free Spirit Block Party, and it's all free spirit designers. So 
all your favorites, Anna Maria Horner, Tula Pink, um, lots of designers featured in the book, uh, 40 blocks, and then there's some sampler uh, projects at the end. So here's all of the blocks and the projects in the table of contents. Um, this is just an overview, and all the, the blocks use free spirit prints. So um, some of them are piece, and some of them are foundation paper piece, which means the foundation paper piece, the templates are included in the book. And uh, those, for example, here's some templates, those you just print off on your printer paper, and then um, foundation paper piece per the pattern instructions. Okay, so lots of different prints featured. Most of the designers use their own uh, fabrics from their own fabric lines. Okay, I'm not gonna flip through every single block, but I think you get a basic idea. There's var varying levels of skill for each of the blocks. Um, some new techniques uh, to be used. Some, some are really easy, some are really hard. Um, lots of half square triangles in that particular block. All the templates, if it's applique or foundation paper piece, are included in the book as well. Uh, let me flip through some more, and then I'll show you the sampler quilts at the back of the book. So I thought that block was really fun. I like working with curves a lot, personally. I'm normally a solid, here's the Tula Pink blocks. Um, I'm normally mostly a solids quilter, um, but I could definitely visualize a lot of these quilt blocks in solids too. Okay, so let me show you the sampler quilts at the back. Okay, this one's called Over Here. So this one uses the nine blocks. Here's another one called Subdivision. Let's see, yeah, here's another one of the, another photo of the whole entire quilt. This one's called Tribal. I really like the, the bold uh, colors in the background. Cozy just uses the four blocks four blocks with borders. And then this last one's called Neighbors. Okay, so again, um, this book is called Free Spirit Block Party and there's 40, 40 quilt blocks and five sampler quilts patterns included in the book from your favorite Free Spirit uh, fabric designers. So I'd like to invite you now, uh, if you're watching on Facebook, go ahead and hit the share button, share this sewing video with your other sewing friends on Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, I hope if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel that you will consider subscribing so that you can be the first to hear whenever we go live or when we post a new sewing video on YouTube. And regardless, um, either on Facebook or YouTube, if you could at least hit the like button, which is the thumbs up icon, the likes, shares, and subscribe, subscribes help us out so much. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, so my demonstration this week is for comic book boards. So I saw some questions in the comments recently about folding fabric and organizing it in your sewing room. So I looked on the internet uh, in the last week and a half for different options for boards to fold your fabric onto. Um, there were lots, there were a variety of different options. Some uh, depending on how many boards or the type of boards might cost several hundred dollars. And since I have a considerable amount of fabric in the sewing room, I was trying to go for something more economical. So I. Uh, picked up these comic book boards. They measure seven inches by 10 and a half inches and each pack comes with a hundred. So I thought um, this is about my price point. Uh, this sounds good to me. So I pulled out one of the boards and I'm gonna step over to the side camera and show you the folding process that I use. And you can use uh, different amounts of fabric for the folding. I'm gonna show you a fat quarter and also a yard. And you can definitely fold multiple yards. I think up to six, six to eight yards on one board so it's pretty handy to have in the sewing room so I'll, I'll see you over on the side camera okay so here's here's the board one side shiny it's a, a rather sturdy cardboard the other side is matte um, these are acid free so they won't ever discolor your fabrics over time I think I might have Danny perhaps zoom out a little bit um, I've got my fat quarter here so I'm going to show you how to fold the fat quarter and get it onto the board first and then I'll show you with the yard so um, with the fat quarter, first I'm going to fold it selvage to selvage. I did iron these fabrics before the show. I practiced with uh, not ironing them and I preferred the look of them on the boards, uh, ironing them first, so that's what I did. Um, so I'm going to fold the fabric 
halfway, about halfway up the board, and then fold it again. You can either just go ahead and put this on your sewing room shelf, or I found these plastic alligator clips, which I think I've seen in th these in the past for, like when you purchase a dress shirt or something like that, it comes uh, with the clips on it already. So I'm just gonna go ahead and place two of these clips on here. Other options for attaching the fabric um, so that it won't unravel while it's on your um, shelf is, uh, I was a little concerned about using pins or metal clips just because there's a potential over time, especially if you live in a humid climate of those rusting over time, but I felt pretty comfortable with the plastic clips and I think it looks pretty nice and it's definitely very thin and um, can place that on your shelf and then easily see the little bit of fabric peeking out. So that was the fat quarter. I'm gonna show you the, the one yard cut now. All right, so as I mentioned, I did iron this before the show. Um, I'm going to go ahead and first fold this in half so that the selvages meet, and the selvage just means the, the printed end or the end with uh, a finishing, not the, the cut edge. So the selvage is the opposite of the cut edge. Okay, so I'm gonna fold it in half so the selvages meet, and then I'm gonna fold it one more time so that the folded end meets the selvage. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna fold it one more time. The cut edges will be meeting this time. And then I'm gonna go ahead and place my board over here. Again, just like with the fat quarter, I'm gonna fold it so that the fabric covers half the board. And then fold it one more time, and then you can either, again, like I mentioned before, place this on your shelf as is, or use some sort of clips or pins to hold the fabric layers in place. So. Definitely looks really neat. I got a little um, anxious at the thought of, because I liked how it looked with the, the fabric ironed first. I got a little anxious fold at the thought of ironing all my fabric and then putting it on the boards, but I thought maybe I'll just start slow. When I, when I purchase new fabric, I'll start with that new habit of ironing it and placing it on the boards. And then whenever I'm bored, maybe I'll iron 10 pieces of fabric and place it on boards. Definitely takes up a lot less space than just being randomly folded on my shelves, and I think it looks pretty nice and neat. So again, um, that was the comic book boards. Um, definitely can fold multiple sizes of fabric cuts from the fat quarter up until um, six or even eight yards. So I thought this was um, really fun. As you can see, it's very slim, and, and I like that um, I can possibly purchase more fabric if I fold it really nicely and I can free up some room. <laughs> Um, so I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. Uh, do you fold your fabric in a particular way? So let me know in the comments. What I was doing previously is I got out my quilting ruler. Um, I measured a certain width of fabric that I wanted. I think it was seven inches. So I was folding all of my fabric seven inches wide. Uh, the widths varied a little bit. And I did the best that I could getting it on the shelf. So that's what I did uh, with this particular uh, sewing room uh, stash. That's how I folded that. Um, I noticed that I've been a little bit lazy getting some of the fabric back on the shelf. For instance, if I take it off to see if it'll work for, for a particular bag, change my mind about the fabric when I put it back on the shelf. I'm not very careful about putting it back on there. I think I could definitely save a lot of room if my fabric is folded on these boards. It would be a lot easier pulling it off the shelf and then getting it back on in the same condi condition, but um, like I said, I'll slowly but surely work through refolding my fabric on the boards. Um, a little, little by little, is the key to that. So um, I'm going to announce the winner of last week's giveaway. Before I do that, I wanted to let you know. Um, oh, Danny's telling me to wait one second. Michelle says, "Just, just checked my notes. Week four for the Sublime Bag Sew Along. When we make the handles, I will be giving extra tips and tricks for the straps." In week five, Bronwyn has a tip and a trick for you. So um, that was the answer to that earlier question about the Sublime Bag Sew Along. I knew you guys would have an answer. Thanks so much, Michelle. Um, if you have a question for me, let me know in the comments, either a sewing related question, a question about a notion or tool, or a bag making question. Go ahead and type your question in the comments right now. You do need to be logged into your Facebook or YouTube account in order to leave a comment. Um, I wanted to also announce the winner of last week's giveaway. Uh, the last week's giveaway winner was Sarah with an H. Um, I think, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing the last name correctly, Lang, L-A-N-G-E. So congratulations to Sarah. I've contacted Sarah on social media and just waiting to hear back about her shipping address to, to mail off her prize. Congratulations again to you, Sarah. 
I have another giveaway for the end of the show and we'll get to that after the questions. So Danny's gonna put some questions on the screen for me to answer. I'll answer as many as I can. I apologize in advance if I do not uh, get to your question live. Uh, Mary says, Danny, can you ask Sarah where she got the plastic clips from? I found these online. Let me find my little baggie, I left it over here. Um, I found a pack of 500 clips. I don't remember how much I paid, but um, I'm, I'm sure it was probably under $10. So um, again, I, I, I got the plastic clips even though I saw people use a variety of different items to hold the fabric on the boards. Uh, because I was worried someone mentioned that the pins might rust over time and I thought that would be super terrible if I had like a especially cherished fabric and there was like a rust hole like right in the main prints like right like if it would be right through the bird and I couldn't use the bird that would I, I would feel a little bit heartbroken about that so that's why I decided to get the plastic clips for the comic book boards all right, Danny's combing through for some more questions there. Gwenna says, how much bark cloth is needed for the Clyde Bank since, since it is 59 inches uh, wide? Um, that's a great question. Uh, obviously, it would depend on the size that you're making. Um, I did use one yard pieces for um, this one and for the larger size that I made. Um, actually, I had to order more fabric for this particular bag because I changed uh, my pattern pieces a little bit after I had cut out the fabric and so uh, thankfully I was able to find this online but I had to, to wait for more fabric to come for this particular one. Um, actually I think the large is one and a half yards uh, so I don't want to lead anyone astray with that information. Adrian says, how do you like your Juki uh, serger? Thinking about getting one. Um, I love it. So I have a Juki, that's, that's the serger that I have. It's an air threader so um, you do have to thread uh, two of the threads. It's got four that you do have to thread, but two of them, you push a little button and the air sucks the threads through, so super convenient. My previous serger was a Brother uh, 1034D. Um, it was a great serger, but uh, I don't know, the threading's a hassle sometimes, and it was very uh, particular as far as being threaded, so sometimes uh, it wouldn't be off and, and sewing, but I did have that one for several years. Danny got that one for me. I think it was a Christmas gift one year, um, but I do love the Juki serger. It's a little bit quieter than my previous brother serger. Um, I did use it on a couple projects, but I haven't used it extensively because uh, I think the project that I, I made some pajama pants for Violet, a couple pairs of pajama pants. Charlie says, do you mind if people teach your patterns at local quilt stores, either the free ones or making sure everyone buys the pattern? So that's a great question, Charlie. I absolutely do not mind. I would be very honored uh, for anyone to teach any of my patterns um, at their local quilt shop or for their sewing group. Um, as Charlie mentioned in his comments, um, everyone just needs to have their own copy of the pattern or if it's a free pattern, um, uh, that's totally fine too. I'm happy for uh, the free patterns to be taught as well. Kathleen says, Sarah, do you have a link for the comic, bo comic book board? Yes, the link is in the description. Um, so you can find the boards there, and again, they come in packs of hundreds, so that should cover you for at least a good uh, percentage of your stash. Janet says, question, can the OD coat handle warm dishes like putting it in a casserole bag? Um, that's a really great question. I did iron, I, I'm not sure if you saw my demonstration with the OD coat. I did iron it with the iron with the, um, was it the freezer paper? No, the parchment paper. I did iron it with the parchment paper between the fabric and the iron. Um, and it was totally fine, nothing melted or anything like that. Um, I'm assuming that would be fine. I know I've used laminated fabrics for casserole carriers in the past. Um, yeah, it sounds like it would be perfectly fine. Ella Lou says, if we use cork or faux leather on the sides of the Clyde Bank, do we use interfacing on those pieces? So that's a great question. On my particular Clyde Bank totes, I did use the foam interfacing on the cork side panels. Um, if you watched the book club discussion this past week, I believe Tamara had, um, she made her bag with fleece, so she made it with fleece instead of the foam. Um, I think she might have skipped the fleece on the side panels, uh, but don't quote me on that. But she did use a different interface that I used, and her bag still stood up and looked really, really, really great with the fleece instead of the foam. Um, Sherry says, how did you name the, the Clyde Bank bag? So I, with the book club projects, I decided I would try to, if possible, choose an element or a location from that particular month's book. So. In book number one, which was The Sewing Machine by Natalie Fergie, um, one of the, actually the town that the Singer Sewing Machine Factory in, was in was Clyde Bank, and so that's why I named it the Clyde Bank Tote. Um, if you're reading book number two, 
Um, one of the towns in the book is called Faithwell, so the next project will be Faithwell. I don't want to give you the whole name of the project because that kind of gives it away, but Faithwell is in the name of the second free pattern. Um, Kathleen says, where did you find the blue Clydebank fabric? Uh, let me pull that one out. That bag fell on the ground. Um, actually, this, so first off, this is from the Outback Wife fabric line. Um, it's been actually, it was actually two separate lines, but both called Outback Wife. Um, they've already been out for several years, so um, your mileage may vary depending on which prints you may be able to locate. I actually found this particular blueprint, which I really wanted. Um, my friend recommended a shop in the UK called, I believe it was called Purple Stitches. Um, they actually had some left at the time, so I was really lucky to get some of this print. Um, but I have seen some of the other prints on Etsy. Like I mentioned, I cut this one wrong originally, so I had to repurchase this particular prints and I found it on Etsy. Stash Fabrics also carries um, a good amount of Outback White Fabrics still and that's stashfabrics.com. Amanda says, I am sure this will be touched on in the sew along, but if you are using cork for the sublime accents, should you seal the raw edge with OD coat or something else? So you could either leave the edges raw, you can use um, uh, edge coat, OD coat, uh, some people use uh, a seam sealant called Fray Check or Fray Black. Um, that'll work as well. Recently, I've done demonstrations on, I think, all those methods. I think last week was the, uh, the fray block demonstration um, when I used the little nail polish bottle. So there's a whole bunch of different options um, as far as leaving your edges raw or coating them. Um, Kathy says, problems with ironing the African wax fabric. So no, I didn't have an issue with that. Like I mentioned, majority of the fabrics had a very minimal... Um, if any layer, I'm sure they all had a layer of wax, but uh, to the naked eye, at least most of those pieces, except for the two prints that I showed you on camera, I couldn't really detect the wax. Um, so no issues with ironing those. I ironed a couple before the show. Um, no problems with that at all. Um, Casey said, on the gloss cosmetic bag, is it cool to use pre-made uh, double full bias tape? Um, that is not sacrilege at all. Uh, you could certainly use uh, store-bought bias tape inside of the bag. I think I, I have it behind me, so let me just show you uh, what the what Casey's asking about, just so um, those of you who are not familiar with the pattern understand. But um, this particular bag is finished with bias binding. Um, this is right here. I use the same fabric uh, for the binding as I did with my lining, so I guess it sort of blends in. You can also use fold over elastic, which uh, would be uh, maybe a little bit easier of a sew. Uh, because the fold over elastic, uh, both of the long edges are finished, uh, you wouldn't need um, as wide of a piece. Um, so the fold over elastic you could use, for example, um, hmm. I've not personally used this, so I'm trying to think in my head, perhaps a 5 eighths of an inch uh, piece of the fold over elastic, and um, you just basically wrap around the raw edge. So one one edge of the fold over elastic would be on, um, I guess, the lining side of the bag, and the other edge would uh, be flipped over to, to enclose the raw edge so no raw edges are showing. And because it's fold over elastic, it has a little bit of a stretch, it's totally fine just as the bias tape uh, to go around curved edges. Um, what's the best pattern for doing a really, high, uh, a really high bag for my walker? So I'm trying to think of which bags I've seen for either wheelchairs or walkers lately. Um, Actually, Michelle's watching, so may, Michelle, for your scooter, what bag would you recommend for um, something like that? I have seen Baker Street bags modified, made a little bit bigger, and placed on the handles. I'm trying to think what else. Let me think about that for a second. Diane says, my zipper bulges out when making the amethyst bag. Any tips on how to prevent this? Um, I'm not sure if you, I'm guessing you mean the outer zipper on the case, the, the long handbag zipper. Um, so you want to make sure that, um, first off, I, I recommend using Wonder Clips so that uh, the pins don't create bulges in the fabric and in the zipper and then translate into the finished zipper when you sew those in. Um, what else do I recommend? Uh, double check your tension. Sometimes if uh, the, the presser foot tension is off a little bit, it might be pulling uh, the fabric and zipper layers through the machine unevenly, which may cause ripples. Uh, those are my first two thoughts about that. Um, but yeah, definitely the pinning with the Wonder Clips is really important to get everything in there and looking evenly. Um, Hope says, how do I press the iSpy pouch where the vinyl is? That's a great question. Um, I definitely recommend, um, first off, put your project to the side, off your ironing board, 
get the iron on your ironing board and then just iron just your ironing board to get it really hot and then as soon as you've done that grab your i spy pouch um, put your hands on the inside and then the with the clear vinyl against the ironing board and just kind of move it around to get it hot that tends to definitely smooth things out you don't want to ever touch your iron to the the clear vinyl because it'll melt um, any word on when Pinkerville will be available for purchase? I'm hoping, keeping fingers crossed, that we have it uh, sometime this week. Uh, they they billed me for it last week, so um, it, it's definitely on the move. Um, I will let you know on social media and on the live shows as soon as we get it, and we'll have two-yard packs as well as five-yard packs. I'm definitely um, anxious to have more of that unicorn print in the house. Adrian says, I made the Tudor bag with side loops for a wheelchair and it would work with a walker too. Oh, that's a really great idea. Um, Tamara says, I saw some Clyde Bank totes with the strap done differently, separately for the walker use. Oh, thanks for reminding me about that, Tamara. So what Tamara means is on the Clyde Bank tote, instead of connecting the strap on the front of the bag and then the strap on the back of the bag, some ladies have connected the straps. Uh, so this portion of the strap connected to the, the front and then same thing over here, this portion connected to the front so that you have uh, the two separate straps uh, so they're opposing to what what I've done here and then that can easily hook on the handles a, of a um, walker or a wheelchair. Penny says my daughter wants a bag for traveling for her liquids when she brings them on board do you have a pattern for that so I I would definitely recommend uh, the gloss cosmetic bag for that um, I've also used I don't think I have one in the sewing room I have also personally used when we've flown um, for Minikin season one, the Jet Set Cinched pouch. Um, it's, uh, the bottom of the pouch is about this big and it's got mesh pockets on the inside and it cinches at the top with a drawstring. I found that I was able to fit all of our various bottles of shampoo, conditioner, sunscreen, uh, toothbrushes, toothpaste, everything, uh, contact lens solution, everything fit in that Jet Set Cinched pouch as well. But if you need more storage space than that, then the gloss definitely holds probably twice as much as the Jet Set Cinched pouch does. Denny says, does the Park Sling bag come in different sizes? So it absolutely does. The Park Sling backpack is a one strap backpack that you can wear crossbody if you prefer. Um, and it comes in size small and size large. So size large is a little bit around the lines of a uh, the size of a school backpack. And the, the small version is great for uh, like an everyday out and about type of uh, purse size. I plan on using mine. Um, hopefully it's in the cards maybe in a year or two to go to Disney. So that's what my size small will be used for. Lynn says, hi, any updates on your logo labels? Yes, I actually did not talk about those today uh, since I already had my outline written. Where is it? I got these a couple days ago in the mail. Um, I'll talk about these on a future show, but it, it's got my logo on it. I chose the nickel finish and it attaches to your bag just like a magnetic snap does. It's got the prongs in the back. So um, again, I'll talk about these on a future social Sunday. I know it's really shiny and you can't really see the logo, but I was really happy with how these turned out. Even though they took a while to get back in, um, that's okay. I wasn't in a, a major hurry about those. Gabby says, where can I purchase colorful fabric like yours? Um, there's, I guess I can mention a few of my favorite online fabric shops. So I, I really love Stash Fabrics, uh, stashfabrics.com. Um, Hawthorne Supply Company is another good one. Um, Fat Quarter Shop, I'm trying to think where else. There's so many good online fabric shops. Uh, I so, I'd probably say those are my top three that I purchase from most often. Um, Hawthorne Supply Company and um, stash fabrics. Uh, actually, all three carry. I like a lot of art gallery fabrics. Tula Pink's my favorite fabric designer. Um, I like um, previous Cotton and Steel, and now they're now they're under a different name with Moda um, Ruby Star Society. So um, those are all really great prints with lots of bright colors. Estelle says comic book boards seem to come in different sizes. What size were you demonstrating? So I decided. Because I measured my shelves and I, I felt like this particular size was the most effective with my particular shelf space, w space which is a bookshelf. Just a bookshelf. My bookshelves are from Ikea. They are called the Billy Bookcases, but these are the 7 inch by 10 and a half inch comic book boards. There's a smaller size too, but like I mentioned, these were 
um, I felt like these were more space effective with, with a, an actual bookshelf. All right, Danny's calling that on the question. So um, I apologize again if I did not get to your question live, but we'll be back this Tuesday answering more questions and Danny will be on the show this Tuesday. I know some of you were missing him uh, when we did our book club discuss discussion this past Tuesday, but he'll be back this Tuesday. Um, all right, so the giveaway for this week is a $50 gift certificate to my website, sosweetness.com. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is answer this question in the comments on this video on either YouTube or Facebook. And the question is, what is a notion you have a lot of? And I had a sort of a sidebar, it wouldn't fit because uh, my original question was really long. What is a notion you have a lot of because you keep misplacing it? So you can answer either of those questions. Um, my notion that I probably have the most of besides wonder clips is scissors. Everywhere I look, I have tons of different types of scissors, fabric cutting scissors, paper scissors. My daughter's friend came the, over the other day and she came in here and asked me for scissors and I was like, what kind of scissors do you need? It, you know, is it for paper? And I thought like, well, that's a really silly question. They're not out there sewing. Of course, it's a paper scissor, but um, I had to always ask that because my, um, as for all of you, our paper scissors are really valuable and they can't be used to cut just anything. Um, so anyway, um, let me know in the comments and you'll be eligible for that prize. I'll be drawing a randomly drawn winner at the end of the day this Saturday and announce that winner on next Sunday's show. So again, thank you so much for joining me for Social Sunday. Hope you had a great time. I had a super awesome time. I'll see you again next Sunday. I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye everybody.